Hello. And welcome back to the Umbrella Academy. In this lecture, we will discuss axial chirality in allenes. Before discussing this topic, you must have gone through our lecture on chirality and enantiomers. If not, then I suggest you must. The link is given in the description as well as here. We now know that, the necessary and sufficient condition for chirality, in an object or molecule, is non-superimposability of the mirror image. And, this non-superimposability, can be achieved, if a molecule has single, configurationally stable chiral center. We say, such molecules possess central chirality. However, the central chirality is not the only way to achieve non-superimposability of the mirror images. Thus we say, the presence of central chirality, is the sufficient condition for a molecule to show chirality, but not the necessary one. Because, there are numerous types of molecules, which do not possess central chirality, but still show non-superimposability of the mirror images, and are thus chiral. For example, allenes having chiral axis, show chirality without having central chirality in the molecule. And these allenes are cumulated dienes, in which double bonds are directly adjacent and share a central atom. The defining feature is the arrangement of double bonds like C double bonded to C, double bonded to C. To understand the axial chirality in allenes. First consider this alkene whose terminal carbons have different substituents. The two carbons connected with double bonds and the substituents attached are in the single plane. Therefore such molecules show geometrical isomerism. Similar substituents pointing opposite across the double bond makes the isomer trans. And similar substituents on same side makes the isomer cis. In contrast, if we add second double bond adjacent to this one, we get a structure like this. Now, the substituents on the end carbons are in separate planes, which are orthogonal to each other. That means this double bond and the substituents on this left side terminal carbon will be in the horizontal plane. The substituent A comes out of this screen, and the substituent B goes into the screen. This double bond and the substituents on this right side terminal carbon are in the vertical plane, which is the plane of this screen. The two planes are orthogonal to each other. Let me show you why the substituents on end carbons are in different planes, which are orthogonal to each other. Consider these three carbons in the process of making an allene. These terminal carbons are sp2 hybridized. And the central carbon is sp hybridized. One of these sp2 hybridized orbitals forms this sigma bond with central carbon. The other two sp2 hybridized orbitals form sigma bonds with these substituents. Same is the case with this left side terminal carbon also. Both this terminal carbon and central carbon have unhybridized p orbital. P orbital on right side terminal carbon overlaps sidewise with the P orbital on central carbon to form this pi bond. The central carbon has another P orbital in unhybridized state. But this one is perpendicular to previous P orbital used for pi bond formation. The unhybridized P orbital on this left side terminal carbon must orient parallel to the P orbital on central carbon. Only then pi bond can form. In order to achieve so, this carbon-carbon single bond must rotate like this, so that p orbital on terminal carbon orients parallel to this p orbital on central carbon. In doing so, the substituent A also moves and goes into the plane of this screen, so we show it on dashes. The substituent B comes out of the vertical plane. And we show it on wedges. Now the two p orbitals are parallel and can overlap to form a pi bond. Thus, substituents on the two terminal carbons of allene are in different planes, which are perpendicular to each other. Consider this allene, with same substituents on both end carbons. It will have two sigma planes. And will be a chiral. 
As an example, consider this allene with only hydrogen on both end carbons. It will have two planes, horizontal and vertical. The vertical plane becomes sigma plane for horizontal one. And horizontal plane becomes sigma plane for vertical one. Another example of the same type will be this allene. It has only methyl groups as substituent on both end carbons. Thus both these allenes will be a chiral. Take this second type of allene. The end carbons have similar substituents, but the two are different. This will also have two sigma planes. And hence the molecule will be a chiral. As an example, consider this allene. Which has only hydrogens at left end carbon and methyl on right end carbon. Here also, the horizontal plane will be sigma for vertical and vertical plane will be sigma for horizontal plane. Hence this type of allene will also be a chiral. This third type of allene has similar substituents on one of the end carbons. And the other end carbon has different substituents. This will have one sigma plane and hence a chiral. As an example, consider this allene with hydrogens attached to left end carbon. The right end carbon has methyl group and hydrogen attached. In this case, only the vertical plane acts as sigma plane, that bisects the horizontal plane into two equal halves. Thus, this will also be a chiral. Consider this fourth type of allene. With different substituents on end carbons. This allene doesn't possess any sigma plane. As an example, consider this allene. With methyl and hydrogen on both end carbons. The horizontal plane is not a sigma plane for vertical one and vice versa. However, this molecule has an axis passing through the double bonded carbons. This is called chiral axis. And this makes the allene chiral. This is an axis about which a set of ligands are held so that it results in a special arrangement which is not superimposable on its mirror image. Because of this chiral axis, this molecule is chiral and optically active. Thus, if we take this allene, which has different end substituents, it will have a chiral axis passing through the double bonded carbons. If we put a mirror in front of this allene, we will see the mirror image like this. Of course this will also have a chiral axis. These mirror images will be non-superimposable, hence enantiomers and optically active. Similarly, this allene with different substituents on end carbons, has chiral axis. And its mirror image will appear like this. Which is non-superimposable. Making these allenes enantiomers and chiral. These dash lines passing through double bonded carbons represent chiral axis. We will now discuss the rules for assigning the configurational descriptor of chiral allenes. Consider this allene, having different end carbon substituents. It will have chiral axis and hence will be optically active. If we look at the molecule from this side, then this carbon becomes front carbon or proximal carbon. Whereas, this carbon becomes back carbon or distal carbon. Remember that, substituents on front carbon get priority, over the substituents on back carbon. Then, substituents on front carbon are prioritized as per CIP convention in given preferences 1 and 2. Whereas, substituents on back carbon, as per CIP convention, are given preferences 3 and 4. Thus, as per CIP convention, on the proximal carbon, chlorine gets number 1 and hydrogen gets number 2. And as per CIP convention, on the distal carbon, carboxylic carbon gets number 3 and methyl carbon gets number 4. We then draw the Newman projection of this front and distal carbon. The back carbon is drawn as circle. And the front carbon is drawn as solid line. Notice that, front carbon has substituents on horizontal plane. Therefore solid line is drawn horizontally. The substituents on back carbon are in vertical plane. 
Hence we draw these on vertical dashes. For this observer, the number 1 is on right side of the horizontal plane, so we write it here, on the right side of the horizontal solid line. The number 2 is on left side of the horizontal plane. So we write it here, on the left side of solid line. The number 3 is on top of vertical plane. So we write it on top of the vertical dashes. And number 4 is on bottom of the vertical plane. So we write it on bottom of the vertical dashes. The arrow from 1 to 2 to 3 moves clockwise, hence the configuration is R. We write lowercase a as subscript. This lowercase a stands for axial. Now if we look at the same molecule from this side. Then this carbon becomes front or proximal carbon. And this one becomes back carbon or distal carbon. The priorities of the groups accordingly change. Carboxylic group on front carbon becomes number 1. Methyl becomes number 2. Chlorine on back carbon becomes 3 and hydrogen becomes group 4. Now we draw the Newman projection of this molecule. The back carbon is drawn as circle. The groups on back carbon are in horizontal plane. So we draw these on horizontal dashes. The groups on front carbon are in vertical plan. So we draw these on solid vertical line. Now group 1 is on top of vertical line and group 2 on bottom of the vertical solid line. For this observer, group 3 is on left side. So we write it on the left horizontal dashes. Group 4 is on right side. So we write it on the right horizontal dashes. The arrow from 1 to 2 to 3 moves clockwise, hence the configuration is R. We write lowercase a for axial. Notice that, whichever side you view the molecule, the configurational descriptor remains the same. Moreover, in case of molecules with axial chirality, least priority group 4 being on horizontal line doesn't reverse the CIP convention. As is the case in molecules with central chirality. Consider this second allene drawn in vertical position. If we look at the molecule from this side. This carbon is front carbon or proximal carbon. And this carbon is back carbon or distal carbon. As per rule, substituents on proximal carbon get preference over those on distal carbon. Thus, chlorine gets number 1. Methyl gets number 2. On the back carbon, carboxylic group gets number 3. And hydrogen gets number 4. Now draw the Fischer projection. Which will look like this. Group 1 is on the right of the observer. Group 2 is on the left of the observer. Group 4 is at the top of back carbon. Group 3 is at the bottom of the back carbon. Now, the arrow from 1 to 2 to 3 moves anticlockwise. Hence the configuration is S. Write lowercase a as subscript denoting axial. If we view the molecule from this side, this becomes front or proximal carbon, and this becomes back or distal carbon. Now priorities will also change. Carboxylic group on front carbon will be number 1. Hydrogen will be number 2. Chlorine on distal carbon gets number 3. Methyl gets number 4. Now draw the Newman projection of the molecule, which will look like this. Number 1 group on front carbon goes down and is written here on the bottom of the vertical solid line. Number 2 group is written on top of the vertical solid line. Number 3 group on the back carbon is on the left side of the observer and is written on the left side dash of the horizontal line. Number 4 group is written on the right side dash of the horizontal line. Now, the arrow from 1 to 2 to 3 moves anticlockwise, hence the configuration is S, right lowercase a as subscript denoting axial. Thus viewing molecule from any side doesn't change the configuration of the allene. Consider this allene. 
it is a cumuline with even number of double bonds. And we have seen earlier in the orbital diagram of this allene, that substituents on end carbons are in different planes. And if both end carbons have different substituents, then this allene will have a chiral axis. If we take this allene, it is a cumuline with odd number of double bonds. And if we check the orbital picture of this cumuline, we will see that all atoms, the double bonded carbons and the substituents on terminal carbons, are in the same plane, just like in case of a simple alkene molecule. So this type of cumuline will show geometrical isomerism. For example, this cumuline with three double bonds is a cis isomer. Because similar substituents are on the same side. And this one is trans because similar substituents are on opposite side. Thus in general, for a cumuline like this, with n carbons having different substituents. If n is zero or even. Total number of double bonds will be odd. And it will show cis-trans isomerism. If n is odd. Total number of double bonds will be even. And it will show enantiomerism due to the presence of chiral axis. If you don't want to miss out important lectures, then subscribe and press bell icon for notifications of new lecture uploads.